Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session. Today, we will be walking you through creating a web application on the IBMI without writing a single line of code. We will accomplish this by using Valence, a product developed by CNX that originated back in 2008 and has vastly matured over the course of the last 12 years into its current form, which is now Valence version 6. So first, let's start with a quick overview of Valence. What is Valence? Valence is a portal. The Valence portal provides a single entry point for users to run all of their web applications. Valence handles all security and session management while staying true to the IBMI security model. Users may log in using their existing IBMI profiles, or you can choose to have Valence manage the user profiles, or you can use a combination of both. After logging in, all subsequent requests to the back end run under the IBMI username linked to that profile, thus inheriting all of the IBMI object level authority for that user. For example, user sales at cnxcorp.com may have its profile linked to QSEC offer, thus inheriting all of its authority for each request that it makes. The Valence portal is multilingual and it is currently translated for nine languages. It is also themable. You can integrate your own company logos, change color schemes, add a footer, among other things. And it is also customizable, meaning that you can add additional functionality to it. For example, uh, suppose in addition to prompting for a username and password, you also needed to prompt a user to select from a list of available warehouses upon logging in. This type of functionality can be added without having to modify the base code as Valence provides a mean to hook into all the portal components. And lastly, a mobile version of the portal is available for both iPhone and Android devices. All administration of the portal is done through the portal admin app. <clears throat> Here you will find all sorts of settings to allow you to tweak the portal's operation to fit the needs of your organization. This is also where you could where you would create and maintain user profiles, groups, environments, applications, and other technical settings. <clears throat> so in addition to the portal, Valence also contains a variety of helpful applications. Nitro App Builder being one, which we'll get into. Uh, Nitro File Editor, this allows you to view and maintain any table on your system. Fusion 250, uh, that's an entirely web-based emulator, allowing you to bring up green screen sessions directly within the portal. Nitro I Admin is, uh, allows you to administer your IBMI. For example, uh, you can answer messages, enable users, hold jobs, interact with spool files, among other things. There are many other applications included, but I'm not going to have the time to touch on all of these. So Valence is also an application framework. <clears throat> the Valence RPG Toolkit provides everything you need to interact with the browser application. And the Valence JS is the front end piece that provides security and integration within the portal and it is compatible, compatible with any JavaScript framework. And of course, uh, once you complete these apps, you could de deploy them to your users through the Valence portal. Valence is also a low code app builder. This will be the primary focus of the presentation today. Nitro App Builder, or NAB, is an application that creates other applications. It requires no programming skills and is very easy to learn. Applications can be created in a matter of minutes. By the end of this presentation, you will know how to quickly create highly functional, attractive, and user-friendly web applications on your own system. So let's get started and create an application. We created some simple wireframes to give you a better idea of what we're going to build. So let's take a look at these first. Okay, so we're gonna create an application called Customer Sales. Uh, the initial screen will have a list of customers and a chart that shows the top sales by state. So maybe we'll have the top five states by sales. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the user will be able to click on the customer name to change it. 
um, they will also be able to click on what we'll, we'll provide in, like a map icon that they can click on and view the customer's location in a map. Uh, they'll also be able to download a PDF. And then if they click one of these chart elements, we're going to take them into a new screen that will show a breakdown of the sales. So suppose they, they click on Illinois, we're going to change the screen, Illinois sales breakdown, and then we're going to list all the city, zip, and customers for Illinois. Okay, now that we've taken a look at this, let's go to the login page for Valence and log in. So I will be logging in as QSEC Offer. So before we begin, uh, I want to give a quick overview of the you know, navigating within the portal. The initial screen we see here is referred to as the launch pad. And each tile here you see represents an application. So I'm logged in as QSEC Offer. These are the applications that I have authority to. If I logged in as somebody else, I may not see the same applications. This is all handled through the portal administration app. To launch an application, you just click on a tile. So the app that's running will always show up here in the center control bar. Now I can run multiple apps at the same time. If I want to get back to the launch pad, I could click the Valence logo and run another app. I could also launch more apps through this, we call this the, the navigation drawer. So rather than going back to the launch pad, I could just slide this out, it'll overlay the screen, and I'll launch another app. And I can also search for apps. Suppose I was searching for Portal Admin, I could use this search. Um, but let's just talk about switching between applications. So this shows me the number of apps I have running, and I can switch between them through here. Or I could click this icon here, and this will bring the other running apps, and I can just click through them. So I'm going to close each application now, and we're going to launch Nitro App Builder and start creating this application. Okay, first screen we see here is the data source and widgets section. So we're on the data source widgets, and then there's an app section. I'm going to be going back and forth to these wireframes because I just want to focus. I feel like it'll be easier if we just focus on one component here at a time. So Let's just say, so the first thing I want to create is this grid, a grid of customers. So in order to create a widget, we call these widgets, a grid is a widget, a map is a widget, a chart is a widget, we need data. So we're going to first retrieve the data. We're going to create a data source of customers. Now all the data source is, is we're just pointing to the files. You know, behind the scenes, it's a SQL statement that runs. I'm going to click this plus sign to create a new data source. This will take us through seven steps. Some are optional. Um, the file we're using is demo CMAS. So this first step is enter the file. So I can add as many files as I need. In this case, I don't. I'm going to go to the third step columns. I can either click next or click the step I want to go to. And this is showing me all the fields in that file. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna walk through this rather quickly just because of time constraints. So I'm gonna add all. And I'm gonna go to filters and I just want to, I'm gonna limit my results to customers that are in the United States. So the filter section, C country equals United States. I'll go to order by, let's order by customer name. You know, I can toggle the order here, ascending order is fine. And the last step is the preview, and this is where it's going to pull the data. And everything looks good, and I'm going to save this. I'm going to name this data source U.S. Customers. So now we have <clears throat> a data source. So data sources are represented by this icon, kind of like a database icon. So I can click here, and I can create widgets against this data source. So these are all the widgets available. We're going to choose an edit grid because we want it, we want it to be a grid and we, we're going to give the user the ability to edit. So I'm going to click that. 
So here, the first section, it's showing us all of the available fields in our data source. And we just need to click and tell, tell it which columns we want the user to see. So I'm going to click name, city, state, and year-to-date sales. And it'll build a little preview down here. Um, and this is really just so you can set your widths or you, know, you can just get a quick view of what it looks like. And right away, I see I kind of don't like these column headings. So I'm going to change this to just be name, this to be city, state, and we'll do YTD sales. Um, the year-to-date sales should be money, so I'm going to format that. So I'm not going to have time to go over everything you can do in here, um, but we'll touch on a few of them. So I'm going to format the year-to-date sales column. Click this, and I'm going to format it as money. And we have all sorts of different you know, formatters in here. And hit OK. And now it should, every time you make a change, it'll repaint itself. Oh, I think I chose, chose the wrong one. I want this first one. OK, um, let's go to the next section, the configure section, and we get a, a much larger view of the grid. Um, I'm going to remove its paging right now. I'm going to remove that paging. I'm just going to say load all the records. Uh, I can add a search in here. We'll just add a search. You'll see it'll repaint, and I'll say do a search of contains. So if I type in here, if any part of these words have, uh, I don't know, C-O-R in it, it's going to find them. So it's finding the corporation. It's finding the corner here at the beginning. Uh, download. We're going to allow a PDF download. And when they download it, uh, what should the name be? We'll call it US Customers, the name of the file that gets downloaded. And we can add one other thing here. Let's, let's add some coloring where let's highlight a customer that has low year-to-date sales. So we'll say anything less than 40,000. So I'm going to go back to columns. We're going to focus on that year date sales column, and I'm going to click Colors, and I'm going to add a rule. Let me just bring this down. If year to date sales is less than 40,000, then make the background color this red. Save. Done. Let's take a look at it. Let's make sure it's working. Okay, good. And last, I want them to be able to edit this column. So I'm going to the edit section and I'm just going to focus on these columns here. When editing, include this field, include the customer name field. And I'm also going to allow them to edit the data in line. Meaning if I go back here, we wanted them to be able to just click in the cell and start typing. That's called inline editing. And I want it to be inline cell editing. So let's save this, and we'll call it US Customer List. OK, so now you see the US Customer List belongs to the data source of US Customers. Now I'm going to create the application. So let's go to Apps, and I'm going to click Add to create an application. Right away, it's asking me, you need to add a widget. Every, every application, the, the requirement is you need at least one widget. Well, we only have one. I'm going to click that in. So we call this right-hand side, we, we refer to it as the canvas. This is what the user will see. And then as I interact with the canvas, like I may click this, this left-hand section changes to you know, the various settings based on what I clicked. I'm going to put an app bar title on here. Call it uh, US Customer Sales. So you'll see that I'll put an app bar here. And I'm going to save it. So first time I save, it's going to ask me the name of the app. What portal category do I want it in? Categories, these are categories, like administration is a category, utilities, documentation. These are all configurable through portal administration. Um, I'll just leave it in that non-categorized category for now. Including portal, do I want it available in the desktop portal? Yes. And do I want it available in the mobile portal? Sure. It'll actually create a mobile-specific version. Let me save this. And now let's launch the application. It should be available. I should be able to search for it. U.S. Customer Sales. Oh, 
Hold on, I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. U.S. Customer Sales. Okay, so here it is. I can click in here, and I can change things, and that's saving to the database. Now, let's go back and let's add the functionality for the map. I want to be able to click this and bring up a map. So I'm going to start moving a little quicker. I'm not going to go over every option, but hopefully you'll still get a good idea of how this all works. So I'm going to create another widget, and I'm going to create a map widget. In here, I just need to, basically, I just need to click the fields here. These are the fields from my data source of how I would type an address, let's say, in a Google search. So I'd probably do address, city, state, zip. And it should try and build out the map at the first record. Okay, so we, we know it's working because it's finding a location. So I'm going to save this and just call it customer map. Save. Now I'm going to integrate this customer map into our application. So let's go back to apps. And I'm just going to click on the app. And now I'm going to add a widget. I want this widget to be a pop-up. And notice as I hover over, you get this add as pop-up. So let me just click that, add as pop-up. So there's my customer map. So I need to tell it when do I want that map to pop up. And I do that through behaviors. So let's go in here. So behaviors kind of gives an outline of your application. Um, we're in, we created, we, we, every app has a main section and that's where we put our customer list. I could drop this customer list down and see it's always listening for a row click or I could do other things. Like I want to add an icon column. And I'm just searching for an icon of like map. So I'll click that and I'll put a tooltip, view location. So now it's going to add an icon column to this customer list. What should it do? What should, what should we do when it's clicked? Well, when it's clicked, what I want to do is I want to filter an existing widget. Basically, I want to take another widget in the application and I want to filter down its results based on the click of this. So filter widget, what widget do you want to filter? We only have one other one, customer map. These are, this is the data source. These are the data source fields from the filter widget from the map. And then these are the fields from the grid. It's the same data source. The key field is customer to customer. Um, I can, I can save now or I can go to these optional steps. I'm going to go to the optional step or I can update the widget title. Basically, when I click it, do you want to put a title on that pop-up window? And yes, I'll put, uh, you know, customer name, location. So it'll say like CNEX Corp, location. Save, save, and save. So now I'm going to switch back to my U.S. customer sales app. I'm going to do a shortcut here. I'm going to right click and do reload frame. This is the same thing as me closing it and reopening it. it. Should look a little different. Now we see this. So now I should be able to click on this and load the map. If I find CNX, there we go. Okay. Let's go back and let's add this guy. So for this, I'm going to need a new data source. I'm going to go back to data source widgets, and I'm going to show you a quicker way, another way to create a data source. I can go here and I can just, when I hover over, I could click this enter freeform SQL statement. I've already cop or I've already created this. I didn't want to fumble through typing it. So I'm just going to paste the SQL statement in here. Notice it'll detect all the, all the, all the tables and give you the, all the options of the fields available to them. Preview. And data looks good. And I'm going to save it. And U.S. or I don't know, top sales by state. So I have that. I'm going to create a column chart. What's the data field? Total sales. Oop. And what is the label? 
state name. And I'm going to limit it to five results. There we go. Uh, maybe I'll change a couple of things. I'll make this money. I'll format that as money. And that's probably good enough. Let's save this. Top sales chart. Now we're going to incorporate this widget into the application. So we want it just to the right of it. So back to apps in here. I'm going to add widget. And this time I'm not going to add it as a pop-up. I'm just going to click it and it's going to put it right beneath it. So now I have arrows where I can move the location of it. I'm just going to click here, put it to the right. And I'm going to click here and I'm just going to adjust the margin here a bit. I'm going to remove the margin just so it's equal throughout. And that's really it. Let's let's save this and just see what it looks like in the application. We might want to change something. I think I might want to add a title to it. Okay, yeah, let's add a title to this. We'll say top five states. So back, I can expand my app and see everything that's in it. I'm gonna click on this guy and go right to UI and title, top five, sales by state. There we go. Save, save. So now when I reload the application, it'll have that change in it. Okay, last part. Um, well, I shouldn't say last part. We gotta get this pivot grid in here. So I'm gonna go back to App Builder and we're gonna go to our data source. And our U.S. customers data source, we're going to add another widget to it. Pivot grid. This is easier to just show when you see what it does. Um, I'm going to start with the left axis of city. So I'll, I'll view it now and watch what that does. It's grouping every city. It's, 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 it's taking all the distinct cities and putting them onto a left axis. So Beneath city, I want zip code. Now let's see what that does. So now it's showing me all the unique zip codes in each city you know, that we have customers for. And then beneath that, we'll do uh, customer name. And really I want it as city, zip, I'm dragging this, name. Okay. And then I want to aggregate. I want to count up. So year-to-date sales will be by aggregate. And I can format that as money. And now let's take a look at it. Okay, so it's grouping everything. So within Chicago, this, these are the sales. These are the sales by zip code. And then that's the breakdown by customer. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I won't explain why now, but I'm going to make this, um, this state just an available column. So let me change one thing about this. I'm going to change, there's all sorts of different things you can do here. I'm going to change the view to what we call an outline view. And I'll allow the user to uh, export data if they choose to. And let me just change this to city, zip, name. There we go. Okay. So let me save this. We'll call it uh, customer sales pivot. So notice this, it's in an entirely new screen. We had our main screen. We want to go to an entirely new screen here. So let's go back to apps and I'm going to click inside my US customer sales application and I'm going to create an entirely new section, app section. I'm going to call it uh, detail. So now I'm on detail, now I'm on main. Now I'm on detail, main. Depending where I'm selected, when I do add widget, it's gonna add it to that section. So we're gonna add the customer sales pivot. Okay, now I need to build in the behavior that when they click one of these elements, I wanna to switch to that detail screen and I wanna filter down the data to only that state. So 
let's go and do that. So that's through behaviors. So what I'm concerned with is when they click this chart. On chart click, I want to do something. I want to filter a widget, and I want to filter the pivot grid. And I want to map state to state code. This, this, the state here I know happens to be like ILCA. So we're going to use state to state code. And I'm going to save that. So in addition to filtering the widget, I also want to swap screens. I want to hide the entire main section and show the detail section. So I'm going to go to hide show widgets. And I'm just going to click up here. I want to hide the whole main section and I want to show the whole app detail section. And I want to load data. Basically, I'm just going to show it and I want it to go and pull the latest data based on that new filter that I just added. Save, save, save. Let's just try it out. So I'm going to reload it. And I will click Illinois. Okay, so now it's filtered by Illinois and we're seeing the breakdown. So I need a couple things. I wanted to change, let's go back to the wireframes. I wanted to put the state name and say sales breakdown and I need a way to get back. So let's go add that in. So I'm gonna go in here, go back to behaviors. So in addition to filtering the widget and hiding and showing the sections, I also want to set app bar title. And it gives me, you know, all of the fields available that were clicked so I can, it'll serve as replacement. So I want to say, you know, Illinois, which would be whatever state name they chose, sales breakdown. So that'll take care of that. But now I need a back button. When I'm on the details section, I need a way to get back. So I can just click here against the details section, add button. Button text, let's see. I want it just like I want it just like this. I just want a back arrow, you know, to the left of the title. So I'm going to put no text here. Position is going to be to the left of the title, and let me search for an icon like left arrow, and we'll use this guy. So there will be a left or a, a left arrow button here. So when they click it, what do I want to do? Well, I want to do basically the opposite. I want to show the main section and hide the detail section. And I also want to bring back my original app bar title. So I'm going to set app bar title and just say set to previous title, save, save, save. Let's try it one last time here. Okay, I'm going to click Illinois again. There we go, Illinois sales breakdown and I can get back. Let's just add one finishing touch here. I'm going to go back into the application and I'll just change the color scheme a bit. Uh, we'll add a blue theme here and I'll save it again. Reload one last time. Okay. Our application is now complete. Just make sure. Good. Well, we hope you like what you've seen. Uh, for further information, you could visit our website at www.cnxcorp.com. Click the downloads link uh, if you're interested in installing Valence. And thank you for attending the presentation, and we hope that you will soon take the opportunity to trial Valence yourself. Thank you. Goodbye.